Yes, you are welcome to my today class of the SLW 600 Karibusana. Welcome to my blended mode class. Yes, uh, anyone can unmute and read what I posted on the screen. Haraka. Participants. Quick. Yeah. Welcome to the students of SL, SLW 600. Syrogisms. A form of deductive reasoning where you arrive at a specific conclusion by examining two other premises or ideas. Very good. But you have to keep your gadget very near so that the voice would be very much clear. Anyway, that I posted on the skin syllogism, and which I say a form of a deductive reasoning, and where you are arrived at a special conclusion by examining the two other premises, premises or the ideas. So that is the syllogism. It is nothing but the part of the legal reasoning. So now let us see that the, what is the exact the legal reasoning is concerned and approach to the problems. When you see the legal reasoning, it is nothing but studying the method is to equip the law student with the right tools to enable him to think like a lawyer. It is studying the law to apply to the problems or situations and uh, think like a lawyer. Think like a lawyer. That is called legal reasoning. The main purpose of studying the legal method is to equip the law students with the right tools to enable him to think like a lawyer. So this is what would be addressed by discussing the legal reasoning. So if the legal method is employing the legal reasoning to the facts and coming out the solutions. So to understand is better, it would be best if the meaning of legal reasoning is exp expatiated upon, means explained by that one. So consider Oxford English Dictionary says, Thinking persuasively in a coordinated, orderly, sensible and logical manner. Logical manner. Thinking persuasively. Persuasively means, anyone? Because whatever the judgment we are giving to the court is persuasive value to support it. Pursue it, to follow it. Are you pursuing that case or not? Means, are you following the case or not? So, that is the pursuiness. Thinking persuasively in a coordinated, orderly manner, and sensible manner, and logical manner. So, nothing but a prudent man should have to suppose to do a particular thing in a particular way. A prudent man, when he wants to enter into the room, suppose the room is closed, and first he knocks the door to say to get in or not. And if the sound will not come, then he will open it and look it, then he will ask the permission. But directly he cannot open the door and come inside. So is a, a prudent man can do such a thing. How? He thinks in a orderly manner, sensible manner, logical manner, and where the person is supposed to do a particular thing. I don't know whether you are know it or not. Sir, whether it is there from the, any, any logic is there or any, any rule is there. For instance, if the boys are wearing the shirt, if the girls are also wearing the shirt, can it is a logical to keep the buttoning from the up to down or down to up? Anyone? Online students, did you get my point? Shirt, shirt. S H I T, shirt, which is having the button, not zip. Sir, we know the zips are from Chinu to Jew. <laughs> I 
I am speaking button. So what is the logic? A woman should have to button from the up to down or down to up. And the man, they should button from the up to down or down to up. Down to up. Women or men? What about a woman? Why? What is the logic? There is something reasoning is there. There is something reasoning is there. If a man keep the button open also, I am not a Bustani and Ajuan. Now you can see only body and chest and nivele. But what about the woman? It is nothing but the attraction showing. So women should have to tie from the up to down and a man should have to tie from the down to up. Who said? Who said? Criminal Procedure Code? Who said? Logic. It is a logic we will say. And that is the logic where one should have to follow it by applying the brain sensible manner and orderly manner. Both the way. Sensible manner and orderly manner. In the most of the world, the people are right-handers. Am I right? Why right-handers? Why not left-hander? Very few people there were the left-handers. And we do more work with the right hand and the less work with the left hand. It's the nature. It is a, a natural gift only there. And the mythology also say, when you are giving the arms to anybody, could you give the arms with the left hand? We don't give the arms with the left hand. Arms, arms. A-L-M-S, arms. Not A-R-M-S, arms. We give the right hand. And that is the logic and that is the sensible. And when you give also, another way, see, you can give like this. I don't know whether you could observe it or not by keeping the hand and touching it and you give it. And that is a, a sensible man do such a thing. And a logical man do such a thing. So that is a, a thinking persuasively in coordinated and orderly and sensible and logical manner. It is the actual dictionary meaning for the reasoning. Then the Bloch's dictionary meaning is given legal as define legal. Define legal and that is reasoning. And here define legal as of a relating to law falling within the province of law. It is about the law they say of relating to law or falling within the province of law. So, from the above definitions, one can deduce a definition of the legal reasoning as art of thinking persuasively in coordinated, orderly, sensible, logical manner. So, by the above definition, we can say that, we can come to the conclusion, a thinking persuasively in a coordinated and sensible and logical manner. That is called reasoning in relation to law. So legal reasoning simply concerns itself with the learning how to think like a lawyer. What is legal reasoning? How to think like a liar. And uh, the reason is a liar is Akili Kalisan. He is a double-edged sharp knife. Panga. So that's why the people say don't mesh with a liar. Don't mesh with a liar. And some people even stay pimbeni means adjacent to the liar also they will fear. Because the liar will file a, a case. Suppose your son or daughter using the radio or, tele, or the television in a, a sound noise in the night. He will record it and he will file a suit against you. Because it is a nuisance. Is it clear? So, that is why the people look at fear of it. Because you know how to tackle and how to deal. So, a legal reasoning is nothing but thinking like a lawyer is a legal reasoning. 
But uh, how the liar will think? Liar will think in persuasive, sensible, coordinating, and logical manner. That is the thinking. Even a prudent man also. A man with a sensible sense, he will also think in a prudent way, in a logical way, in a consolidated way, in a precise way, in a persuasive way, in a coordinating way. He will think it. So that is the about the. In order to fully understand the legal reasoning, the language of the law would be first be highlighted. There would be a definition of some key terms, and finally the different methods of the legal reasoning would be discussed. Legal terminology plays an important role, and today, with a curiosity, with a curiosity or with a eczema itching, I talked to the legal methods in the first year today. You know, lawyer will play with the words. Lawyer will play with the words, and a soldier will kill with the rifle, but a lawyer will kill with the words. That is the speciality of a lawyer. He make a juggler with the words, and he make an argument. Only lawyer and only painter can make white to black, black to white. I repeat, only lawyer and only painter can make white to black, black to white with his logic. And in the moot court also, you will argue from the both the sides. Plaintiff side you have to argue, again the next round you have to argue on behalf of the defendant side also. So a lawyer will be well versed in the both the sides, and. Uh, he will argue the cases in the both the sides and hence he will be trained in both the sides also so ambidextrous ambidextrous means using the same skill with the same right hand also the same skill left hand also same skill so we will say the ambidextrous man so a lawyer would be having such a quality now let us see the what is the language of the law language of the law is different from ordinary people and today i have given 10 commandments to uh, the first year people i will also post to <laughs> rosta 10 commandments uh, in one commandment is there mouth is not a pen stand or a pen holder <laughs> mouth is not a pen stand or a pen holder because i saw the most of the people here i am teaching here more than 15 years in tanzania People keep the <laughs> pen in the mouth. <laughs> so that's why I put it in the my Ten Commandments. Mouth is not a pen stand or pen holder. Is it? So that is. And another also I put it over there. Keep your two hands not chini. Chini is not a mobile property. It's a mobile property. So keep your two hands on the table. You know the, what the people will do? They send the SMSs. I said, no, keep your hand on the desk or table, two hands. So now let us come to the language of the law is very much important. And I told the, one of the, a simple example also, what is the language? Language we say, claim we will say, it is a terminology, legal terminology. Breach of your contract, legal terminology. Infringement of right, legal terminology. Proxy, legal terminology. So some terminology, you cannot avoid it. And here we will say plaintiff. But in other places, they, say, they don't say plaintiff. USA said climate. Because our terminology is different. And the terminology also plays an important role. So every language, every profession has its own terminology. The language in this context does not mean the whole new lingua franca. Here, two only languages are used in the world. Number one, King Reza. Number two, French. And a person would be well versed at least in one language, international language. And that is a must. So language does not mean only the new lingua franca, rather it is considering the language of the law. A language of the law is very important. It will be highlighting the, some of the general characteristics of the legal language. 
Of course, it is have some general characteristics of the legal language, but a language is having its own significance. Legal language. The following are the general features of the legal language. So, what is the language? Is law is expressed in general terms. What is this means that when laws or legal provisions are worded, they are done in a very that would ensure that in such a man covered a saying like people no because of the law deals with all the aspects of life it cannot afford to provide for any specific situation does it make a general provision in the most instances so here that say law is expressed in general terms what is that criminal code is a code and uh, section 317 of course here he has given a nigerian code but doesn't matter code is a code but here we will say criminal act we don't say code here in tanzania we say criminal act but we will say that again civil procedure code a person who is unlawfully kills another in such a circumstances is not to constitute a murder is a guilty of manslaughter he said a person unlawfully kills another in such a circumstances and is not to constitute a murder is a merely a guilty of manslaughter in the manslaughter we will say in india we don't say manslaughter what tanzania will say manslaughter is different from murder is it not but in india we don't say manslaughter we would say attempt to murder attempt to murder we will say or we can another say culpable homicide we will say terminology varies culpable homicide is not amount to murder the reason is he doesn't have actual intention to kill him but he was right that is called culpable homicide amount to murder or not to amount to murder intentionally killing over there yes it's amount to murder so they made the distinction between the manslaughter and the murder but uh, i don't know whether i discuss r versus wadli case law that is shipwreck case and a small boy killed and they say necessarily be eaten otherwise be starvation to death case law deadly versus shifford are you did, did you not read that case law in the in the penal code it will come in the penal code necessity was there hence i killed the small boy and ate his flesh to survive myself because they did not have at least more than two two months or three months on the food that is a case law you studied in the penal court r versus dudley case law and here r versus means regina versus dudley and stephen case law that is actually and they said it is not amount to the murder they say it's a murder even though you are not supposed to kill anybody for your quenching your own for food fulfilling your own food and that case law is very much important case law if you get the chance to you read the case law it is a very classical case law anywhere in the world we discuss that case law anywhere in the world we will discuss the same case law so manslaughter is different and murder is different so it should however be noted that the law could be specific in some instances for example constitution of course he has given that uh, one of the provisions constitution further provides that what the constitution provides liberty of a person freedom of expression and freedom of right is guaranteed by the constitution and the right to vote and many other things and when you see the legal system is concerned and here in the tanzania court of appeal is the highest what about the kenya is the court of appeal or supreme court kenya <laughs> this is supreme court i don't think that they say court of appeal but anyway subject to the correction in india we will say supreme court of india it is the apex court of course for review petition it can be done there is a different issue but it is the apex court so court of appeal and high courts and uh, district magistrate court resident magistrate court and the cases should be filed and this is the manner they can do but uh, it is having their own language that is the legal language then the use of the abstract concepts lawyers are not allowed to use the words anyhow unlike the scientists who can give name to the 
a new thing discovered. A lawyer is not allowed to formulate words that are not already in use. A lawyer should have to use such a word which is already there in existence. And thus, when a lawyer wishes to express himself accurately and he formulates a legal concept, and an example legal concept is rule of law. A rule of law is a legal concept. And this concept usually contains the deeper meanings in their literal interpretation. For example, the rule of law has three main components. What is the rule of law has three main components? Number one, supremacy of the law. Law is the supreme. Number two, equity before the law. And three, fundamental human rights. These are the three, co three components of the rule of law. And uh, another point they say, other remarkable feature of the legal language is, legal language in addition to the above, or some other specific features also it is having, the use of common words with the uncommon meaning. I repeat, the use of common words with the uncommon meaning. Example, instead of a lawyer to say, the court should hold that. He says, it is submitted. The lawyer's language is different. They did say, give the application. Mm. Give the petition. Write the petition. Submit the petition. The wording is petition, not the application. But in other people, give the complaint or give the application. So, the lawyer's language, it is submitted to the court. Old habits die hard. <laughs> old habits die hard or old habits seldom die. So, now, again we will come back to our, we never... Sir, we are approaching the High Court. Can you say we are approaching the High Court? We appeal to the High Court. Is it clear? Appeal. There is a legal terminology. Appeal to the High Court. That is the legal way. And uh, a legal language frequently uses Latin terminology. A Latin terminology is more in the legal language, like, I don't know whether you can be able to give that answer any. Can you tell me at least one, one of the Latin terminology? Starting from sister, Juliana. Can you give me one legal terminology? Especially, Latin. Somebody? No, I did not. Recipsa laquita. Very good. What it means? The thing speak itself. Yes, next. Altavares. What it means? Next. Still you are thinking. See, being a woman, she thought in a sharp time. And being a man, you should have to think more quickly than her. <laughs> yes, next. Nini? Gumusana. Can you tell? You, you tell. Anyway, that I, I, it's difficult to find, find out it. Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay, tell me you are about you. Hmm? What it means? Mm -hmm. Next. What it means? Sign die. <laughs> See, <Sinedi. laughs> Okay, if the pronunciation vary. So what I want to say is, a Latin terminology is more used in the legal language. And we find many things in Mencitria. Actus rem nisi Mencitria. 
and uh, ignoring their facet, excuse that. Ignoring their juris, non excuse that. Actual personality is maritime come persona. Nemo dat quad habitat. And delegare non delegare. Delegate non delegare. So there are many Latin terminologies we can use it when you are using the legal language. So for instance here given the ultravirus, consensus addidum. Consensus addidum. Identity of the man. Identity of the subject. And then nemo dat quad non habit. Another is king can do no wrong. King can do no wrong. Rex protects non peccare. Rex protects non peccare. A king can do no wrong. So, we do find a lot of many Latin terminology in the legal language and frequent use of the archaic words like hearing after, hearing after, after mention, notwithstanding that. They are all archaic words, aristocratic words, and that we use there here. The use of the special vocabulary that is understood by those in the profession, for example, a lawyer would say, my brief has not been perfect. And when he intends to say that he has not been paid, and repetition of the formal like the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth. The truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth. Generally, they will take the Bible in the hand and oath. Whatever I say, I say the truth. Nothing but the truth. I don't say anything untruth. They will take the oath like that. The reason for this special language can be said to be a bit to mystify the profession in order to for it and easily understood by the layman. If a layman would ask, a layman could not know the much of this legal terminology. So, you have to engage a lawyer to defend yourself. Perhaps some team people are very much sharp and the court gives the permission to defend themselves because they are very much sharp in their thinking and their doing. Now let us come to the point here. The some key terms to be understood here is in order to better understand the legal reasoning, there are some key terms that are to be understood. They are principles, rules, Legal rhetorics, norms, these are all the things that we will use it. That shall be subsequently explained by the below. What is made of the principles? A principle means a legal principle has been defined by the Ferrari and Doug, Doug Dales at an established legal truth or proposition that is so clear that it cannot be approved or contradicted except by the proposition which is a clear. A established legal principle is called legal truth. And a established proposition is called a legal truth. It cannot be reproved. We need not to reprove it. And contradict except a proposition which is clearer. A legal principle is there in our studies. If a man cannot be seen and heard for the more than seven consecutive years, deemed that he is dead. Who said? Legal principle. You need not to prove it. Yes, you can disprove it. Yes, we have seen that man in the middle. Otherwise, it is a presumption. What about the desertion? Conjugal rights. If a man or if a spouse deserted the another spouse, consecutive two years, consecutive two years would be there that will be a ground for the divorce or legal separation. So these are the presumptions are there and the legal principles are there and they cannot be disproved and the legal principles act as a standard by which action are to be judged in order to determine the legality and relevance. Any proposition that goes against the legal principle would be open to criticism and rejection by the lawyer. So a legal principle doesn't have any proposition to make any objection. No. An example of the legal principle is the principle of natural justice. A natural justice is a legal principle. Before you are punishing any person, give the chance that man to say why he is late to the class. If the roaster, I ask the roaster, why you are late to the class? 
रोस्टर सर सर डाला डाला टायर पंचर देन एस द अनदर मैन व्हाई यू आर लेट सर देयर इज अ ट्रैफिक जाम एस द अनदर पर्सन व्हाई यू आर लेट सर देयर इज एन एक्सीडेंट देन एस द अनदर पर्सन व्हाई यू आर लेट ही गो द अनदर पर्सन ही गिव द अदर एक्सप्लेनेशन सो वन डे a receptionist came late and she wrote on the register why you are late after that after that then then another man came rosta came another man came and is without looking at the jew what is written they wrote ditto you know ditto is this is this is ditto double inverted comma A single inverted comma twice is called ditto. Spelling D I W T O. The other people also they wrote. The first day a person came in, he wrote a reason, a so and so reason. That's why I'm late. It is a very acceptable reason. And the second time that when she came late, the reception and he wrote the reason for the late. The other people without looking what she wrote, they put the ditto. the second day the boss called when they put write the ditto do you fellows did you read that what she wrote above and you wrote ditto and she they did not read it they said ditto ditto okay ditto is valid dala dala panchar ditto is valid accident is there dala accident is there ditto is valid but she wrote no sir i went for the there is a test is there vital test that is shows the whether she is a pregnant or not she wrote i went for the vital test hence i am late the other man came without reading ditto ditto <laughs> don't do like that ditto at least read what is given over there then it is applicable to you write the ditto is it clear so read then you sign that is a a prudent man business and without reading without blindly you cannot sign trust it of course sometimes you trust it but try to avoid the trust better, better you read it anyway let us come to the another point here here justice is judged on criticism principles natural justice nobody will question the natural justice because i told you know if a person comes late we do not punish him your two hands on the desk <laughs> your two hands on the desk <laughs> so without hearing the reason for the delay you should not punish any person like that is say rd altram patram here the other part side then you can deal the case even a person who is then the gallows for hang to death they will ask what is your last desire of course at the time he cannot say that anything last desire sir i want to take the biryani do they postpone it <laughs> after serving the biryani they will make and their gallows but in the before hand only they will ask it all those things now come to the point of the rules when your rules are there specific instances which are the legal principle would be applied for instance principle of natural justice has the following rules what is the rule principle of natural justice just now i told you latin terminology adi altern patern so here the other side and second is nemo judex in casa sua you can't be judge in your own case you cannot be a judge in your own case and number these are the natural principles i mean rules and legal rhetoric is concerned rhetoric is the act of seeing the pursuit someone to accept your own opinion either through the speech or writing 
Rhetoric is very important for the lawyers as their main business is usually to convince the judge that their care, the cause should be favored instead of the other's party. Here, the expression of the rhetoric is authorities are served, they say, they can either a primary or a secondary or a primary authority include the case law, statutes or secondary authority without a primary authority or the secondary authority, you cannot convince the judge. You cannot convince the judge merely by saying the illustrations. You can convince the judge by precedence, stereotypes, that is the persuasive value, and uh, with some examples. You can convince. Otherwise, we cannot convince the judge. So, legal return is the another pursued someone to accept your own opinion. You try to indulge him, see that he should convinced by your argument. And that is the point, you have to make it out. If a plaintiff backs up his arguments, only five minutes are left, with the primary authority defined, so let on method of legal reasoning and logic, I told you inductive method, syllogism, Deductive reasoning and analogical reasoning. Analogical reasoning. So, deductive reasoning, I gave an example. From a big country to the small place that you reached, that Malimbe. So, a syllogism, deductive reasoning, I also do give. A deductive reasoning, man is mortal, Socrates is a man, hence Socrates is immortal. A bigger premises, narrow premises, conclusion. So that is the deductive method, syllogism. And the, they say, of course, same thing they made, major premises and minor premises and conclusion. Analogical reasoning, uh, that is, in which they are using the inductive reasoning for points similarly and difference between the different cases pointed out. It is used by the judges in order to determine if the authority side is appropriate or not. In analogical reasoning, there is no illegality of the contract, but there is a logic is there. They say intoxicated drinks are prohibited, which is caused hallucination. But in certain medicine also, there is the intoxication is there. Whether that is a dead, that can be not to be swallowed. It is having some drowsiness. For instance, you take cetrazine. If you don't have the habit of taking the cetrazine, it creates the drowsiness. It is an anti-allergic tablet. So, it doesn't mean that the same analogy could not apply over here. Because this is a medical purposes, that is for the mlevi. Is it clear? So, the mlevi is different from the medical purposes. In the medical purposes, some amount of the alcohol is needed. So, analogy we cannot apply over here certain cases because logical reasoning will not allow it. In the Carlyle versus Carbolic Bose car, smoke balls company case law used a case related to the illegality of the contract. No, it is not illegality of the contract. It is the fact that it is a unilateral contract. Whoever gets such influenza and the influenza within three weeks it will be disappeared and they do have a intention to create the legal relationship. That's why they deposited the 100 pounds in the Imperial Bank. It is not a puff. And at that instance, there is no illegality, but it is a unilateral contract. One-sided contract. If whoever uses it, if he did not get the cure, yes, he can get the compensation from the smoke ball company. And uh, even if I find my son, I will give the reward. Either he knows it or may not know it, doesn't matter. If he brought the son back, you are to, supposed to pay him. See, certain, certain things you cannot say no. Because you, you made all the promise. Whether that person knows or not, doesn't know, doesn't matter. He brought it and you have to give the reward to him. Even though he doesn't have the knowledge. So, it is a, ethical values are there. And that would be followed. So, ethics should be followed. Like I told you, quasi-contract. In quasi-contract, the ethical values are there. And uh, one should not... In the beginning only, he has to stop it when he is mowing your lawn. 
But in the evening, you should not say that who asked you to mow it. No, that is not the way of asking him. In the beginning only you have to tell. Otherwise, it will give the consent and you are supposed to pay it even though there is no contract with the mower. Is it clear? So that is the quasi contract where there is no offer and acceptance should be there. But no one can enrich himself at the cost of the others. That is the principle. The equity principles are there. A man who comes to the justice comes with the clean hands. It is the equity principles. Otherwise, you cannot. One cannot go to the court of the law. Both the thieves, they made the contract 50-50 after sabotage of the bank. Can they en enforce in the court of law? Upon <laughs> the reason is, the act itself is illegal. When illegal act, how could they can enforce it? The purpose of the act is different. But the purpose of the contract is different. At that instance that you cannot make the legality, I mean, enforce such a agreements or such a contracts in the court of the law. Because the object is media for my clients. I create a lot of video content.